touched. Oh, happy days. <laughs> God is good all the time. We are in such a time and season where there is requirements of God's children. You know, the word tells us that there would be the goats and the sheep. Goats and sheep, and he would separate them. The goats would be on the left. Hello. So don't get involved in the left, because you'll be left behind. And then there are those who are on the right. And, and in this, these are the sheep. Sheep follow the Lord. They hear his voice. They submit. They obey. God is bringing us to a place. He says, be perfect, for I am perfect. Now, we know we can't be perfect in ourselves. Amen? Amen. But there's a process of perfecting. Practice makes perfect. Amen? You can't expect to change if you don't assemble. Amen? It's impossible. You can do all the convincing you want in your own peanut brain, your carnal mind. But if you're not willing to be consistent in assembling, you can't change. It's just impossible. And without feeding on the word... You can't change. But you can try to feed on the word and not change if the presence of God's not there. That's why the word became flesh. Amen? So there are things that he says that we need to do if we want to be more Christ-like, like him. So there's an area right now where he's requiring me and you to fall into what we call a perfect cooperation. Everyone say perfect cooperation. That is a place, look at it, if you do not have a desire to please God, you're not going to want to be perfect. In other words, we want our decisions to be perfect. We want everything that we're doing to be perfected, to bring glory to his name and know that we're pleasing him. Sin does not please God. Amen? Rebellion does not please God. Disorder does not please God. Fornication does not please God. Greed does not please God. Approval of things that God disapproves of does not please God. Amen. Amen. So if there's really a place where we want to please God, then we want to fall into a place where we're perfected. Perfected in decisions. Perfected in choices. Perfected. Everything is perfected. Why? Because God stands before us in everything we do. So there's a place where we want to get to called perfect cooperation. And that's where there's no hesitation. Yes, sir. Yes, Lord. What do you want me to do? It's not, why do you want me to do this? It's not, well, when I have an opportunity. Or it's when it's convenient. Well, I just don't have time, Lord. I need to go to the beach. I just don't, I don't want to tithe because I've got other things to do. I need to buy new tires or whatever. Does everybody understand that? See, people are always putting themselves before God. You can never fall into perfect cooperation. It's impossible. Why? Because the Lord gave us the formula, deny yourself, pick up the cross and fight, and what? Follow. So cooperation is associated with following. Now, in this cooperation, it's no longer till we get to a place of just follow. We walk side by side. There's a difference. Enoch walked with God side by side. Somebody understand? See, there's an area where we've come to a place where it's not just following, we're walking with him. That's what comes in perfect cooperation. In Revelation chapter 3. Oh, hallelujah. Perfect cooperation. 
So there first must be a desire to please God and there must be a desire to be perfect. Oh, hallelujah. God is good all the time. Welcome to Sunday Morning Live. We are training sessions. This is training. Amen. We are not about religion. Jesus is not about religion. He's the operator and the commander in chief of an eternal military. This is a military operation. That's why Jesus came. Amen. Yeah. It's amazing how the world tries to turn my dad into some kind of religious icon. He's the creator. He doesn't need to be anything else. <laughs> He is, and that's why he is. <laughs> and verse 1, let's speak it. Revelation 3. And to the angel of the church of Sardis write, These things says he who has the seven spirits of God and the seven stars. I know your what? Works. Your works. What's the word works mean? Cooperation. See, you're not saved by works. You're, you're saved by your cooperation, though. Amen. Well, how much you cooperated, whether it's like, listen, if God gave you a way of escape of something, if you're not willing to follow the way of escape, you won't escape. Amen? So that's what grace is. It is a plan for me and you to escape. It's not, doesn't give you a legal right to go do whatever you want to do. Grace is God's plan to escape. So if we're following his plan, then we won't be under his wrath. That's where that doctrine is incorrect. Once saved, always saved. Well, I'm a Christian. That means I can go out and do whatever I want. No. You're an idiot. You're deceived. Think that you're going to get into the throne when it says justice and righteousness is what allows you in. Nothing else. Amen? So we want to practice the things that are pleasing to God. So we've got to get into a place where we are in perfect cooperation, not just following, but side by side. He says, I know your works, I know your cooperations, that you have a name that you are alive, but he says, you're dead. You may think you're alive, but you're dead. Be watchful and strengthen the things which remain that are ready to die, for I have not found your what? Your works or your what? Cooperation perfect before God. Does everybody see that? That's what we call perfect cooperation. He says, remember therefore how you have received and heard, hold fast and repent. Therefore, if you will not watch, I will come upon you as a thief, and you will not know what hour I come upon you. You have a few names, even in Sardius, who have not defiled their garments, they shall walk with me in white, for they are worthy. For they are what? Worthy. worthy. He who overcomes shall be clothed in white garments, and I will not blot out his name from the book of life. That means his name was in the book of life. But I will confess his name before my father and before his angels. He who is in ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. Luke 14. Perfect cooperation. Remember, God's coming back for what? Blemish free bride. Not one that's marred or contaminated. Luke 14, verse 25. Is everybody okay? Yeah. Let's speak it. Now great multitudes went with him, and he turned and he said to them, If anyone, if anyone, that means anyone, does everybody get this? Anyone comes to me and does not hate his father and mother, wife and children, Brothers and sisters, yes, even his own life also, he cannot be my what? Disciple. What's he asking for? Perfect cooperation. Amen? See, there are 
in the body, there are those who are saved and those who are born again. There are those who are disciples and those who are just citizens. Those who are warriors. Those who are kings and those who are priests. Everyone is called to fulfill a position at the highest level. But some people are not willing to cooperate all the way to fulfill their position because they're still involved in their own life. They're still fighting for their lives. And he says, whoever does not bear his cross or fight and come after me cannot be my disciple. So that's two things. Lose his life, must hate everything else. That doesn't mean literal hate. It means he's number one. Amen? For, and then he says, and whoever does not battle, fight to come after me, because that's what bearing your own cross is, cannot be my disciple. Two things he says. Lest after and for which of you intending to build a tower does not sit down first and count the cost whether he has enough to finish it. Lest after he has laid the foundation and is not able to finish it, all who see it begin to mock him, saying, this man began to build and was not able to finish. Or what king going to make war against another king does not sit down first and consider whether he is able with 10,000 to meet him who comes against him with 20,000. Or else, while the other is still a great way off, he sends a delegation and asks conditions of peace. So likewise, whoever of you does not forsake all that he has cannot be my disciple. Now that's powerful who does not forsake all that he has. In other words, we have reached a position and a point in our life and relationship that we realize that nothing is ours, yet everything is ours. Does everybody understand that? Why? Because we are stewards of everything of his. Everything is his, not ours. Everything. Even my red sneakers, he just let me use them today. They're his. This is where we've got to come to an attitude and a reality that everything that we have is not ours. We are stewards of it. Gifts, abilities, talents, everything. And it's amazing how people are still fighting for their lives thinking that everything is theirs. Or there's, you know, first of all, one of the things that's occurred right now is we call that uh, false entitlement. Well, I earned it. Well, who gave you the talent for that? Who gave you the strength? Well, I went to school. I worked hard and paid my own bill. Well, who gave you the talent? And who connected your jobs? See, people don't look beyond themselves. Those are individuals that can never become disciples. They can never be trusted. Everything that you and I do when it's time for purchase, when it's time to do this, when it's time to whatever it is, he says, acknowledge me in all of your ways. Lord, what do you think? It's a real simple thing. What do you think, Lord? What should I do with this? How do you want me to handle this? You know, I just got blessed with this car. What do you want me to do with it? Should I keep it, give it away, sell it? What do you want me to do? Lord, I just got blessed with some money. What do you want me to do with it? It's yours, not mine. These are stewards. These are disciples. This is the place God wants us to reach in everything. Can you imagine how much cooperation that would be in the kingdom and how much more we would expand? But self is still leading individuals' life because they live by how they feel instead of by what the truth is. Is everybody okay? Oh, happy days. <laughs> fruits of perfect uh, per, fruits of perfect cooperation <laughs> what did he say he said you must hate everything but me in other words he's got to be number one that's a fruit of perfect cooperation You're, and without doing this you can't fall into perfect cooperation he says you must forsake all you must fight for my presence. 
You know, people fight for everything else but God's presence. Well, to stand in that welfare line for days to get a check. They'll work many hours to get the things they want. They'll do many things. They'll fight for all kinds of things. They'll fight for what they believe in, even if it's wrong. But fighting for God's presence? See, this is what he's looking for. These are pre-qualifications to become in a place of perfect cooperation. Fighting for God's presence. Keeping him his, your first love. No matter what. And forsaking all. It's a reality point that we ourselves cannot get to, but the Holy Spirit brings us to. Where we realize again, it's all his and his stewards. We acknowledge his approval and his disapproval, of what we're to do with his goods. Amen? Amen? We get blessed with a lot of stuff. My first request was, Lord, what do you want me to do with this? I got cars piling up. What do you want me to do with this? Sell it? Give it away? And when he doesn't tell me anything, I wait. And if I put a for sale sign in, it's to hopefully draw someone that I can minister to. Hello? Philippians 2. Is everybody okay? Glory. Glory. I used to go through great lengths to go get high. <laughs> Boy, did I fight to get high. Problem is I was fighting for the wrong presence. Then I met the most high. Now I'm really fighting. I fight like I never fought before. <laughs> Praise God. Philippians 2.12. Let's speak it together. Therefore, my beloved, as you have always obeyed, not as in my presence only, but much more in my what? Absence. Do what? Work out your own salvation with what? Fear and trembling. You know, people seem to erase that. Well, I'm just going to work out my salvation. What about fear and trembling? Fear and trembling doesn't come without God's presence. It just doesn't come. Because the fear of the Lord comes from God's presence. It says, verse 13, For it is God who works in you both to will and to do for his good pleasure. Then he explains something. Look, do all, the, do all these things without what? Complaining or disputing that you may become what? Blameless and harmless children of God without fault in the midst of a crooked and perverse generation among whom you shine as lights in the, in the world, holding fast the word of life so that I may rejoice in the day of Christ that I have not run in vain or labored in vain. He says work out. That means perfect. We get into a place of perfect cooperation with fear and trembling. Become blameless, harmless. When he talks about blameless and harmless, he's talking about maintaining kingdom morals and integrity. Kingdom, maintaining kingdom principles. Maintaining kingdom morals, that integrity. In other words, Christ's character, attitude, and everything to it. Maintain that. Because once you begin to drift from that, the enemy steps in. In Matthew 6. So in maintaining kingdom principles, we maintain kingdom order. Amen? We maintain divine order. We put things first that please God, not ourselves. Matthew 6. You know, I heard a story about this guy that was uh, it was Sunday morning 
And his wife came in and said, come on, let's go to church. And I said, no, nah, man, I don't feel like going. She goes, what do you mean you don't feel like going? I don't feel like going. You, you, you got to go. What do you mean I got to go? Well, you're the pastor. <laughs> Hello? <laughs> oh, happy days. Matthew 6, 31. Can you imagine if all the shepherds one day didn't show up? So what makes me different than you? Nothing. I'm just a messenger like you. I just happen to be behind this pulpit. What makes me different than you? Nothing. This is where people fall into religion. And they lose that connection. I hate losing connections. I never want to lose his presence. Never. He says, be ready in season and out, right? Oh, yes. 31. Let's speak it. Therefore, do not what? Do not what? Worry. Worry. Huh. Saying, what shall we eat? Oh, snap. And what shall we drink? Or what shall we wear? Or what shall we buy? Or where shall we go? Or... For after all these things the heathen seek. That word Gentiles associated with heathen. <laughs> For your heavenly Father knows that you need all these things. The problem is, he says, but you don't seek first the kingdom of God. People go to the phone instead of the throne. They go to their bank account. They go to everything else but the throne. Gosh, I can't afford this. It's got nothing to do with money. If God wants you to have it, it will be there. But seek first the kingdom of God and his what? Righteousness, which is his morals, integrity, principles, all associated with the kingdom. Then all of these things will be what? Added. Added, added, added. See, now, when these things are not established, Things are not added, they are subtracted. I'm going to say that again. When these principles, moral integrity of the kingdom of God is not established, things are no longer added, they're subtracted. Why? Because the enemy has access now to come to steal, kill, and destroy. But people don't know that. They just think, well, things just happen. Well, things happen because of something. Amen? <clears throat> Therefore, do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will worry about its own thing. Sufficient for the day is its own trouble. Trouble. Seek first the kingdom, counsel, and righteous moral integrity of Christ's character. And choices as a steward of his earth. Amen? of his life, of his goods, till we reach a perfect cooperation which is aligned with kingdom business, kingdom purpose, kingdom will, and the word of the kingdom. I'm going to say that again. I saw all these phrases. Again, we want to get into this perfect cooperation where we are aligned with kingdom business. Kingdom purpose. Kingdom will. And the word of the kingdom. Perfect cooperation. First Corinthians 4. First Corinthians 4.
forsake not to assemble. Oh, yes. 1 Corinthians 4, verse 1. Is everybody there? Let's speak it. Let a man so consider us as what? Servants of Christ, or what we call servants of the anointing, and stewards of the mysteries of God. Moreover, it is required. Everyone say required. That means there's a qualification, isn't there? And stewards, that one be found what? Faithful. So can someone be faithful without perfect cooperation? No. Then he can't be a steward. Then he can't be a disciple. All of these fall in the line. He said, but with me it's a very small thing that I should be judged by you or by a human court. Human court. Now he's separating himself because he's about kingdom business. In fact, I don't even judge myself, for I know of nothing against myself, yet I am not justified by this, but he who judges me is what? The Lord. Why? Because he puts the Lord before him in everything he does. The Lord is my judge. The Lord is my judge. Again, we're to be stewards of his goods and mysteries of revelation. Stewards of his good. And servants, servants to the anointing. And again, the character of Christ must be found in us, and it only can be found in me and you if we are in perfect cooperation, which is faithful, a place of faithfulness. In Psalm 15. Psalm 15. How many want to be disciples? Amen. Praise God. In verse 1, Lord, who may abide in your tabernacle and who may dwell in your holy hill or your presence, right? These are qualifications of maintaining connection because without connection, you can't become perfectly, uh, walk in a perfect cooperation. This is what he says. He says, okay, you want to be connected to me? This is what you're going to have to do. He who walks uprightly and works righteousness or cooperates with the righteousness. From where? Seek ye the kingdom of God and his righteousness. He speaks the truth in his heart to himself. Doesn't justify, doesn't reason. Speaks the truth. Convicts, allows conviction to always be present. I'm going to say that again. Always allowing conviction to be present. <coughs> he who does not backbite with his tongue, does, nor does evil to his neighbor, nor does he take up a reproach against his friend, and whose eyes a vile person is despised. Now that is powerful. He, in other words, they divide, they, an individual despises people that compromise. Doesn't mean you hate them, but you don't associate with them. Amen? Compromise. They're unfaithful stewards, stewards of God's things. And whose eyes a vile person is what? Despised. But he honors those who fear the Lord, reverence, honor, and respect the Lord those who are thirsty and hungry for his righteousness, those who seek, those who love God's presence. He, sw he who swears to his own hurt and does not change. In other words, they're consistent, unmovable. He who does not put out his money at usury. In other words, he's a good steward, realizing that's not his money anyways, it's the Lord's. And doesn't rob God. Nor does he take a what? Bribe against the innocent. He who does these things shall never be moved. In other words, this is a guideline because if you're doing any of these other things, you're going to easily be moved. Amen? Despises evil compromise and associates with faithful stewards. These are true disciples. 
Those that fear the Lord and walk in perfect cooperation. And Psalm 119. Goats can turn into sheep, and sheep can turn into goats. And nobody gets away with it. Nobody. You may think you got away with it, but nobody gets away with it. Verse 65. Psalm 119, verse 65, perfect cooperation. Let's speak it. You have dealt with your servant, O Lord, according to your word. Teach me good judgment and knowledge, for I believe your commandments. Before I was afflicted, I what? I went astray. But now I keep your word. I think I learned my lesson. You are good and do good. Teach me your statutes. The proud have forged a lie against me, but I will keep your precepts with my whole heart. Their heart is fat as grease, but I delight in your law. It is good for me that I have been afflicted, that I may learn your statutes. The law of your mouth is better to me than thousands of coins of gold and silver. See, maintaining a perfect cooperation you know, without maintaining that perfect cooperation, we fall into afflictions. It says, when I went astray, I was what? Afflicted. Now, I'm not going to ask how many people have been afflicted because every one of you would raise your hand. One way or another, we've all been afflicted. Why? Because we went astray. We stepped out of God's protection, whatever it was. Amen? Now, so you may have fallen into affliction and many times in our life, but the purpose of it is to redirect us again. But you may escape the first affliction, third, fourth, fifth, or sixth, but how do you know which one you won't escape and die? You might have escaped death two or three times, but will you escape the next one? See, many don't realize that the enemy's always trying to get us out of position to afflict us. He draws us out by lust of the eye, lust of the flesh, and pride of life. Second Peter chapter 2. Second Peter chapter two. In verse four. It says, If God did not spare the angels who sinned, but cast them down to hell. And delivered them into chains of darkness to be reserved for judgment. And did not spare the ancient world, but saved Noah, one of eight people, a preacher of righteousness, bringing in the flood on the world of the ungodly, and turning the cities of Sodom and Gomorrah into ashes, condemned them to destruction, making them an example of those who afterward would live ungodly. <laughs> and turning the, uh, yeah, and delivered what? Righteous Lot, who was oppressed by the filthy conduct of the wicked. For that righteous man dwelling among them tormented his righteous soul from day to day by seeing and hearing their lawless deeds. Then the Lord knows how to deliver the what? The godly. But he doesn't deliver the ungodly. He lets them stay in their affliction until their hearts turn. And the Lord knows how to deliver the godly out of temptations and reserve the unjust under punishment for the day of judgment. And especially those who walk according to what? 
the flesh, their will, their own desires. In the lust of uncleanness and despise authority, unsubmissive. They are presumptuous, self-willed. They're not as afraid to speak evil of dignitaries or leaders in the body. Whereas angels who are greater in power and might do not bring a reviling accusation against them before the Lord. But these, like natural brute beasts, made to be caught and destroyed, speak evil of things they do not understand and will utterly perish in their own corruption and will receive the wages of unrighteousness as those who count it pleasure. They are spots and blemishes, carousing in their own deception while they feast with you, having eyes full of adultery or idolatry, and that cannot cease from sin, enticing unstable souls. They have a heart trained in covetous practices, and they are what? Accursed children. Accursed children. In Psalm 54. Verse 1. Let's speak it. Is everybody there? Save me, O God, by your name, and vindicate me by your strength. Hear my prayer, O God. Give ear to the words of my mouth, for strangers have risen up against me. And oppressors have sought after my life. They have not set God before them. Say it again. They have not set God before them. Wow. They've not set God before them. Behold, God is my helper. The Lord is with those who uphold my life. He will repay my enemies for their evil. Cut them off in your truth. I will freely sacrifice to you. I will praise your name, O Lord, for it is good. For he has delivered me out of all trouble, and my eye has seen its desire upon my enemies. Again, the, the word is they did not set God before them. So there was no true cooperation. Children of the flesh, accursed children, many claiming to be Christians without fruits of cooperation. Psalm 14. Psalm 14. Is everybody there? Let's speak it. Verse 1. The fool has said in his heart, there is no God. In other words, they've not put God before them. They are what? Corrupt. They have done abominable works. There is none who does good. The Lord looks down from heaven upon the children of men to see if there are any who understand or who what? Seek him first. They are all turned aside. They have together become corrupt. There is none who does good. No, not one. Have all the workers of iniquity no knowledge who eat up my people as they eat bread and do not call on the Lord? There they are in great fear for God is with the generation of the righteous. You shame the counsel of the poor, but the Lord is his refuge. Oh, that salvation of Israel will come out of Zion. When the Lord brings back the captivity of his people, let Jacob rejoice and Israel be glad. Wow. Fool. He says he calls him a fool who's not set God before them. In fact, he says, when we do not do these things, what we are saying to God, there is no God. See, people don't realize how many times they deny Christ. Rebellion is denying Christ. Disobedience is denying Christ. Lack of cooperation is denying Christ. All of these things deny Christ. He told us, assemb not assembling is denying Christ. He says, submit to God, then you can what? Resist the devil. That's why people can't resist because they've not fallen into a full place of full submission. Amen? Listen, we are in critical times right now. The powers of darkness are greater than they've ever been, stronger. They're oozing out of everywhere. Technology, everywhere. 
Things are controlled by their power. Mind control. All kinds of things are happening to individuals, and they don't even know why they're doing it. Go and try and take a phone away from a young kid. They'll try and kill you. Because they've been caught up. They're now addicted. They've been addicted to technology, artificial intelligence, run by Satan's kingdom. And they don't even know it. They don't set the Lord before them. Here God calls them a fool. Amen? Why? Because they, they're not cooperating. They don't set the Lord before them. Or they don't submit to his kingdom principles, morals, and integrity. 2 Corinthians 4. Is everybody okay? You know, when the enemy comes and he'll do everything he can to get us out of order. Amen? He tries to bring us every excuse to prevent us from assembling and getting in God's presence. Every excuse possible. But you always have to compare how we used to be. When we wanted to go do the things we wanted to do, we would do it. We would make a way, even if there was three tires flat on that car, you would get there. Now, the enemy uses an excuse. I got an ingrown toenail. I can't make it. I'm having a hair day. Whatever it is. You got nothing to worry about, Rick. You're cool. <laughs> I mean, but these excuses are just ridiculous, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> oh, hallelujah. I mean, you know, again, you know, I don't want to sound crude, even though sometimes I have to. Um, You know, if it's my birthday, my wife's birthday, or our anniversary, whatever it is, it has no inter it, 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 it's nothing compared to getting in God's presence. Does everybody get it? I, I, we can celebrate it another day. You don't think that honors the Lord? Does somebody understand that? And if my wife says to me, honey, let's go do something. It's Friday night, but, you know, no. She won't ask me that anyways. <laughs> because kingdom business is everything. If we're disciples, kingdom business should be everything. Everything. If it isn't, then we're out of order. And we're trying to just get saved instead of become uh, servants of the Lord or stewards. Verse 7. Oh, glory. Let's speak it. But we have this treasure in what? Earth. Earth and vessels that the excellence of the power may be of God and not what? Us. We are hard pressed on every side. Yes. Yet not crushed. We are perplexed but not what? Despaired persecuted but not forsaken, struck down but not destroyed, always carrying about in the body of the dying of the Lord Jesus that the life of Jesus also may be manifested in our body. Well, how's that going to happen unless you get in God's presence more? There's got to be an exchange. For we who live are always delivered to death for Jesus' sake that the life of Jesus also may be manifested in our mortal flesh. So then death is working in us, but life in you. And since we have the same spirit of faith, according to what is written, I believe, therefore I spoke, we also believe, therefore speak, knowing that he who raised up the Lord Jesus will also raise us up with Jesus and will present us with you. For all things are for your sake, 
that grace having spread through the many may cause thanksgiving to abound to the glory of God. Therefore, we don't lose heart. We don't get discouraged. And we're not men pleasers, we're God pleasers. That's why people get discouraged. Therefore, we don't lose heart, even though our outward man is perishing, yet the inward man is being renewed day by day. For our light affliction, our light affliction, that light affliction, not the long-term one, that light one, it's just to redirect us or to test us. For our light affliction, which is but for a moment, is working for us a what? Far more exceedingly an eternal weight of glory. While we do not look at the things for which are what? Seen. So sometimes affliction comes because we're looking at more of the things that are seen instead of the things that are unseen. Hmm. For the things which are seen are what? They're temporary, but the things which are not seen are what? Eternal. First Thessalonians 4. And then one more scripture. Because you didn't see it. First Thessalonians 4. We are in the time of a new awakening. A new era. The world is changing. The world is literally changing. And either we're changing with God while the world changes. We call it, you know, did you ever see that? Soap operas as the world burns. Anyways, we're all in that soap opera as the world burns. It's not as the world turns. Of course, they're trying to prove now that it's flat, you know. <laughs> Next year will be triangular. Year after that, rectangular. Who cares? <laughs> We're not from this world anyways. Amen? It don't matter to me. I don't care if it's flat, round, triangular. Who cares? What did I say to you? Oh, first that's what it's for. Verse 1. Everybody there? Yeah. Glory. What's the first word? Finally. Finally. <laughs> Hallelujah. Finally. Finally then, brother, we urge and exhort in the Lord Jesus that you should abound more and more just as you receive from us how you ought to what? Walk and what? Please God. That takes perfect cooperation. For you know that what commandments we gave you through the Lord Jesus. For this is the will of God, your what? Sanctification that you should abstain from sexual immorality, that each of you should know how to what? Possess his own vessel in sanctification and honor, not in passion of lust, like the Gentiles who do not know God. It's amazing how many believers, so-called believers, are still acting like this, and they're acting like they don't know God. Not that no one should take advantage of and defraud his brother in this matter, because the Lord is the avenger of all such, as we, uh, as we also forewarn you and testify. For God did not call us to uncleanness, but in holiness. Therefore, he who rejects this does not reject man, but God, who has also given us his Holy Spirit. So to be God-pleasers, we must walk in perfect cooperation, which brings sanctification so we can be used by the Master. You know, if you don't want to be used by God, something's wrong with you. You're not connected at all. Well, I just want to live my life. Right, that's the problem. You want to live your life. When you're supposed to give it to the Lord and he bought your life. See, when you live your life, you've taken your life back. And now you're no longer his. You're yours. And if you're yours, you're his downstairs and there's no fence because the devil owns it amen first peter chapter two
and we'll close here. Perfect cooperation. In verse 11, Ooh, wait a minute. Verse 9. No, verse, no, I'm only kidding. <laughs> verse 9. <laughs> Did you bring your Holy Ghost eraser? But you are what? A chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, his own special people, that you may proclaim the praises of him who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light, who once were not of a people, but now are the people of God, who had not obtained mercy, but now have obtained mercy. Beloved, I beg you as sojourners and pilgrims, abstain from fleshly lusts, which war against the soul. Having your conduct honorable. Well, can you have an honorable conduct without perfect cooperation? No. Having your conduct honorable among the Gentiles, that when they speak against you as evildoers, they may, by your good works, which they observe, glorify God in the day of visitation. Therefore, submit yourselves to every ordinance of man for the Lord's sake, whether to the king as supreme or to governors as to those who are sent by him for the punishment of evildoers and for the praise of those who do good. For this is the will of God, that by doing good, you may put to silence the ignorance of foolish men, as free yet not using liberty as a cloak for vice, but as bondservants of God. Praise God. Father, we thank you for your word. We are honored and blessed. We ask you to protect the seed that's been imparted in us so that it grows and bears fruit for your glory, and that you would quicken us and bring to remembrance qualifications that we may walk in perfect cooperation. In Jesus' name. And everybody said amen.